inside the carburetor, right? Okay, first let's talk about the Venturi. If you are like me and you have really old books on your shelf, you might have one that explains carburetors in great detail and explains that a Venturi is a really cool thing where you take fluid that's flowing through a pipe, if you neck it down at some point to a smaller cross-sectional area, the static pressure at that point at the throat decreases, creating kind of like a vacuum in that one spot. Well, that can be used to suck fuel up into the Venturi. All right, so let's look at that. So the Venturi part of the carburetor is for sucking the fuel up into the line. The second part of the carburetor, the bowl, is for holding the fuel. So after a lot of collaboration, conversations, and actual engineering meetings, we came up with a 3D printed solution for a see-through carburetor. It consists of a laser 3D printed housing, which incorporates both the Venturi and the bowl, and we removed a float and needle from a thermoplastic carburetor made by Briggs & Stratton. We laser cut a front cover that would allow you to see the entire thing, and then we 3D printed a choke and throttle lever out of PLA plastic. So this is the 3D printed see-through carburetor. On an earlier episode of Smarter Every Day, I described a see-through engine and we actually got to see the combustion happen inside the cylinder. Basically, there's four strokes to a four-stroke engine. You have the intake stroke, which is where it's pulling in fuel-air mixture into the cylinder. After that, you have the compression stroke, which compresses the fuel-air mixture. And then you have the ignition at the spark plug, which creates the power stroke driving down the piston. And then the valve at the top opens and you push out the exhaust out of that valve and you start the whole thing over again. You have intake, compression, power, exhaust. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. The interesting thing about the intake stroke is that it is a vacuum. It is sucking air into the engine, and what we can do is we can take advantage of that. Hang with me, this is a little bit complicated. So this is the carburetor, and let's assume the engine is out here to the right. It's taking advantage of the fact that the intake stroke has a vacuum, and it makes air want to flow this way into the engine. So once air starts flowing this way, what happens is air comes in this side, and it starts necking down into the Venturi there. Like we said in our book earlier, where flow is high, pressure is low. And so if you have gasoline down here in the bowl, down here, all full up right here what you do is you have a little bitty pipe right here like a straw that goes up and goes into the center of the venturi and what that does is that creates a little bitty jet of liquid that comes up right here because of that vacuum and then once that happens it mixes and then it goes downstream into the engine like this. So basically you have nothing but air on this side, you've got the fuel coming up here, and then you have a mixture that goes from here forward. That's basically what a carburetor does. The choke and the throttle up top, that's the flappy things we were showing earlier. That's the choke and that's the throttle. Basically what they do is control the mixture that goes to the engine. If you close off the choke and you restrict the amount of air that goes down into the Venturi, then you can create what's called a rich mixture mixture, meaning the mixture that goes to the engine is rich in gasoline. You might want to do that if you're starting the engine and it's having a hard time firing up. If you want to lean the mixture like this, that means the mixture downstream is lean of gasoline. And there are different reasons to do different things, but if you have an ideal mixed choke right here and you have full throttle, then you're going to have great chemistry downstream and it's going to make the engine run really, really fast. So these are the two controls that most carburetors have, and this is basically the simplest design for a carburetor that can exist. So let's go get Dad to show us how to use this thing and see if we can catch it in slow motion. The first thing we had to do is actually hook the gas line up to the carburetor. Okay, I'm going to open the fuel. Here goes. And it'll just fill up. It should. It oh, should it's be doing filled. it. <laughs> I don't know why. Didn't you know that's what the No, I did for? not know that was what was going to happen. Well, yeah. The I mean, it's obvious now that you do yeah. it. Fuel flows in here, and when the float starts to float, it moves this needle, which presses into the seat and stops the flow of fuel into the bowl, so you always have the right amount. Now, backfiring is an issue, right? It is an issue, and how about getting this <laughs> ready to go? Yeah, because we spilled some gasoline a few minutes ago. So so if, if a backfire happens, if I understand correctly, fire is going to come backwards back into the carburetor mm -hmm. and we did not pressure test this carburetor right so this this could explode and all this gas could be on fire and go around us right hopefully not <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact open the door just a little bit let whatever vapors here on the floor go out okay ready yeah oh i saw some vapor 
Did you? Hey, on the intake stroke. Yeah, I'm, we're going to see it. Okay, I triggered. We can kill it. Kill it, yeah. 